Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Suppose 0 is less than b is less than 1. Then, the limit as n approaches infinity of b to the power of n is equal to 0. Now, what does this mean? Well, by definition of limit of a sequence, this means for every epsilon greater than 0, there exists a positive integer k, such that for all positive integers n greater than or equal to k, the absolute value of b to the power of n minus 0 is less than epsilon. Now, in proving this theorem, we are going to use the fact that the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n is equal to 0. And that means precisely the same thing as this. It's just instead of b to the power of n, we have 1 over n. Now, we're also going to use Bernoulli's inequality, which, if we recall, goes like this. Suppose x is greater than or equal to negative 1, and n is a positive integer. Then, 1 plus x to the power of n is greater than or equal to 1 plus nx. Okay, so now let's get into proving this theorem. To start out the proof, we're going to define a to be 1 over b minus 1. Since b is greater than 0, 1 over b is defined. So, this makes sense. Now, if we take this equation and solve for b, we're going to get that b is equal to 1 over 1 plus a. Also, since b is less than 1, and b and 1 are both positive, well, if we take the reciprocal of both sides of this inequality, it's going to switch the direction of the inequality. And we get that the reciprocal of b is greater than the reciprocal of 1. Or in other words, 1 over b is greater than 1. Well, if we subtract 1 to the other side, this means that 1 over b minus 1 is greater than 0, or in other words, a is greater than 0. Okay, now remember, the whole goal in this proof is to show that b to the power of n converges to 0, which means we want to prove this statement. So, since we're trying to prove a statement about every epsilon greater than 0, give me an arbitrary epsilon greater than 0. From here, we want to find a positive integer which makes this statement turn out true. Now, to start, since a and epsilon are both greater than zero, of course, a times epsilon is also greater than zero. And now, let's use the fact that we know one over n converges to zero, which means we're given that this statement is true. And this statement works for every positive real number. So it must work for the positive real number a times epsilon that we have in our proof. So if we take epsilon to be the a times epsilon we have in our proof, then we have that this is true. So there is some positive integer, I'll call it p, such that for all positive integers n greater than or equal to p, the absolute value of 1 over n minus 0 is less than a times epsilon. Now, our whole goal has been to find a positive integer which makes this statement turn out true. Well, we're going to show that p will make this statement turn out true. That is, we're going to show for all positive integers n greater than or equal to p, the absolute value of b to the n minus 0 is less than epsilon. So, since we're trying to prove a statement about every positive integer greater than or equal to p, give me an arbitrary positive integer greater than or equal to p. I'll call it n. And now we want to show that the absolute value of b to the power of n minus 0 is less than epsilon. So let me start out by writing the left-hand side of this inequality. Well, this is just equal to absolute value of b to the power of n. And since b is positive, of course, b to the power of n is positive. So we don't need these absolute values. But then we know that b is equal to 1 over 1 plus a. So let's substitute b for 1 over 1 plus a. So we have 1 over 1 plus a to the power of n. But then we can apply our rules of exponents, which if we recall, this is the same thing as saying 1 to the power of n over 1 plus a to the power of n. And 1 to the power of n is just 1, so we just have 1 over 1 plus a to the power of n. But now 
we can take what we have in the denominator and apply Bernoulli's inequality. Because if we take x to be a and n to be n, then we have that 1 plus a to the power of n is greater than or equal to 1 plus na. But then, since n and a are both positive, of course n times a is positive, and therefore 1 plus na is positive. So both of these guys are greater than zero, which means if we take the reciprocal of both sides, that's just going to swap the direction of the inequality. And we get that the reciprocal of 1 plus a to the power of n is less than or equal to the reciprocal of 1 plus na. So this must be true. And next, we expect this guy to be less than 1 over na. The reason why is because 1 plus na is greater than na. And remember, na is positive, so both of these guys are positive, which means if we take the reciprocal of both sides of this inequality, we get that the reciprocal of 1 plus na is less than the reciprocal of na. So this must be true. But now, let's use the fact that this statement is true, right? Since this statement works for every positive integer greater than or equal to p, it must work for the positive integer n that we have here. So taking n to be the n we have here, we have that this is true. Well, we know that this is the same thing as absolute value 1 over n. But since 1 over n is positive, we can just remove the absolute values. So 1 over n is less than a times epsilon which means if we divide a to the other side, we get that 1 over n a is less than epsilon. So that must be true. So we have shown that the absolute value of b to the power of n minus 0 is less than epsilon. And that is precisely what we wanted to show. Now putting this together, we see that under the assumption n is greater than or equal to p, it follows that absolute value of b to the n minus 0 is less than epsilon. Since n was arbitrary, this means we have shown for all positive integers n greater than or equal to p, the absolute value of b to the n minus 0 is less than epsilon. So, we have found a positive integer which makes this statement turn out true. Namely, p. So, we have shown that this is true. And we showed that this is true under the assumption of some arbitrary epsilon greater than 0. Since epsilon was arbitrary, this means we have shown for all epsilon greater than zero. This is true. So we have proven this entire statement, which means we have shown that b to the power of n converges to zero. So this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.